You see that? Look at it. Look at those bulbs. Not that many left. Finally, almost done with the bulb planting. Doesn't usually take this long, but you know, the holidays and everything just haven't had uh, basically like a full morning or full afternoon to go out and just do it all. So I've had to do it in a little like 30 minute increments and it <laughs> too many bulbs to do in 30 minute increments. That's why it's taken so long. He's so happy. He's so happy. He's such a good boy. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Where are you going, kitten? You got, she's got something to do. I know, this looks like a lot, but this is a third of it. So I'm two thirds of the way through and everything that's left are just things I need to just pop into planters, have some things throughout in the front yard. This is nothing. I'm gonna be able to get this done so much quicker. The hardest part of the job's done and that's the, why would, that's not how you hold this. Popping the holes in the ground. That's what takes the longest. And I kept having problems with this piece of garbage right here. So I went out and I bought something new because I already have a whole bunch of these Ryobi batteries. So I figured if I need to grab another drill, may as well get one that goes with all the batteries I have sitting around. The thing, like that's the whole kitsch with the one plus system. And I think Milwaukee and lots of tools have this set up now where, you know, their batteries, as long as the voltage is right, will fit all kinds of other tools. But what they uh, don't follow through on, at least with Ryobi, and that's just, I'm just speaking locally, by the way, you're supposed to be able to just buy the tool for cheap because you don't have to buy the battery because you already generally have batteries if you're using the system, right? I didn't have anything that I needed that was just the tool. So I still had to buy a kit. It was 80 bucks instead of like, I don't know, it would have been like 60, I guess, or 70 for just the tool. So it's only $10 more. So it's, a, it's probably a stupid thing to complain about. I actually got a pretty good deal on this. It ended up being 80 bucks and it came with two more batteries and a charger. So now I have like four or five batteries and an extra charger so I can rotate the batteries around. Nice. Batteries that it comes with suck though. I mean, they don't suck, but they're a little 1.5 amp hours. That's not very much. These won't last very long. I have a four amp hour one right here. This lasts forever. I got over 400 holes popped in the ground yesterday with this thing and battery's still 75%. And to top it all off, the most important thing, drills like butter. So, so, so much better than this. By the way, I'm not trashing on DeWalt, but this particular DeWalt drill sucks. It's always choking up. Nothing stays inside the chuck. The batteries, I didn't really fully tell you the story. So I had my batteries charged up to use this one. Only one I had and I got four holes dug and the battery died. And there's a battery fresh off the charger. Put the other battery in, nothing. It was dead and it had been on the charger the night before. So I wanted to make sure I had two batteries ready to go. So this just meant the batteries were spent need to buy new batteries. Well, it's like 200 bucks for a pack of new batteries for these things. Well, I'm gonna do that. It's when I already know that I'm not particularly fond of this drill. It's already given me so many problems. So this just made so much more sense, 80 bucks. Two more batteries and it is so freaking good. It doesn't feel as nice. Like when I'm holding it, it doesn't feel like a really good tool. It feels cheaper in the hand. It does have a nicer grip to it. I like the, like actually holding it. it feels nice, but the tool itself, I don't know. It just doesn't feel as nice, but performance is so much better, at least with a six inch auger bit in it. Performance is so good. So much better than anything I was able to get done with this DeWalt. It's this DeWalt, it constantly, like every two or three holes would choke up and you'd have to like adjust the chuck on it or adjust something up here so that it would just not constantly like stop or back up on you. This one, if you're not careful, this will snap your wrist off. You have to be really careful with this one because it's so incredibly powerful. Longevity, I don't know, but the DeWalt tools, they're not what they used to be, at least not in my experience. They're not what they used to be. I have to replace these like every three years as it is. So I'm probably gonna be phasing those out and going more with Ryobi, probably Milwaukee tools. I s seem to last a little bit longer, a little more affordable. Anyways, uh, did I already say, hey, what's up? I'm pretty sure I did. Hope y'all are doing well. That was more just to give the background on why there's still bold things happening because there's just been this whole saga of crap going on with the bulb auger. There was no way I was gonna plant 1500 bulbs by hand. Not happening, have to have an auger. I don't know what else is going on this week. I didn't plan anything. It's the new year, happy new year. Hope y'all had a good one. Or going to have a good, what, when, when does this come out? Yeah, oh, never mind. We are well into January at this point. Yeah, it's good times, a good new year. Looking forward to 2024. So that's what I have going on gardening wise for the week is to finish up the bulbs, because it's January, need to get this done. The ground isn't frozen yet. The ground's still like 45, 50 degrees. It's still pretty warm. 
but we're having more nights dipping into the 20s, so the temperature's gonna start plummeting. So these shouldn't even be inside, but dipped down into the mid-20s last night. So I'm like, well, I can't leave them out there exposed in the mid-20s, had to bring them in. The constant in and out of the house, that's not good for the bulb, so this really has to get done. Probably today, I have to, oh crap, today's Tuesday. I have to finish tomorrow's video, Wednesday's video, the video that came out before this. I need to change my ringtone, it's January. Get it done. I need to get this done sometime this week. Not doing that in the vlog. I think it'd be more fun to go plant shopping. Okay, someone really must need to talk to me. Okay, all right, that's what's not important. Anyways, yeah, let's go probably cut back to doing some plant shopping or whatever else is going on. We're updated on the bulbs and <laughs> my issues between the DeWalt and the Ryobi and just things never working right with the tools. I would write, I think it'd be fun to go look at some plants. Let's do that, let's go look at some plants. Okay, think I might be close. GPS just decided to stop working. 90s music started playing and it's just been going this whole time of driving, so not playing with the GPS or trying to fix it. So we're just going off memory here. It's been like, I don't even know, a year since I was at this place, but I feel like it's coming up. Pretty soon there should be plants. I stopped at the grocery store on the way here and they had a huge display of plants set up, which I've never seen at the grocery store before I thought maybe it was over there it wasn't not looking at the camera because you know driving so may or may not even be able to see anything that's going on in front of me I don't know I just turned it on and have it sitting up next to me I think this is it up here this looks familiar I remember it was kind of at it nope that's not it can't turn right there it's a right turn wherever it is anyways grocery store had huge house plants never seen that at the store before not at our local stores here anyways. They were cheap-ish too, it's like $19.99 for those great big plants. It was tempting, but I was on the way here, so that wouldn't have made sense to buy plants at the store and then come down here where they're gonna have more plants, probably gonna be more expensive plants. I don't remember it being this far down the road. Did I miss it? I couldn't have missed it. It's a big greenhouse at the bottom of a hill. It's gotta be, come I bet it's up here. It's probably at this intersection. But yeah, no plants from the grocery store because I, I just didn't want them bad enough. Didn't want to haul around giant plants through the store while I was picking up my produce. There it is. I don't know if you can even see it. We're pulling up. Plant Haven. Oh, it's gonna be so nice in there to get to hang out with some plants for a little while. It is also like January 3rd or 4th. January 4th today so I don't I don't know what they'll even have they doubt they've gotten anything in since the holidays so it could be fairly low stocked I'm not sure new kids on the block was playing that's not what's playing right now I thought it was the Beatles I had never heard one of their songs before what's that I didn't I don't understand what the hype's about I don't know it must have been one of those you had to be there kind of things I wasn't I was I don't I guess I was but I was like you know two this is lovely. Part there's a blower going in the background. Looks so nice. Big and full, lots of flowers. Oh. Nice big Janet Craig. This is what those tiny little things at the hardware store, the little plants. They get big. I love the pillar. It's just a pillar of spikes. Aglonema's here. Tricolor peacock. I like the speckling on that one. Don't get a lot of green aglonemias. I always get the really insanely colored ones. Oh, that's a nice looking marant. Well, I mean, it's, it's a maranta. Got some stuff going on, but it's big and it's full. You know what I mean? Like these, these are my jam. Those are what I'm talking about with aglonemas. Nice, bright color. These are beautiful. They also, wasn't it just like three or four years ago you could find these? double the size at Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot at the big box stores for like eight to ten bucks? No? Is my misremembering? No, oh, I'm not misremembering. That is the case. They used to be a lot cheaper. Not those like tricolor ones, but just those pink ones, the Siams and various ones. Those used to be much more affordable. It's a nice looking Birkin. I miss it. It looks like a Birkin. Yep. Birkin. I love some zebras. I love zebra plants. They look good too. Really big, bushy, and full. Huh. These are the whole reason I'm here is because I would like to get some spathophyllums, but I want some of the neat varieties, the like mist and... I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but when I see them, I don't know what they are. I just want to see if they have anything fun and unique other than what you already see in here. Some of the ones with the newer colors on them.
Wow. It's a thousand dollar ring of fire. I remember when those came out, when you started seeing them, I think it was like 2017, something like that. They were like 50 to 100 bucks. Wow. How things have changed. It's a nice looking plant though. Oh, some beautiful Coletheas. I love Coletheas. I'm seeing, there's, uh, I think there's mealybugs on some of these things. I have to check things very carefully before I take them home. It's the nature of having things in greenhouses. Pests happen. I like this. Neat looking, that's cool. Oh good, they have some smaller ones because I would probably want like two or three to put into different planters and not have right next to each other. That's a fun looking Florida. What's going on with that one? Some fun little bambinos. Love the bambinos. Little flowers on the peperomias. That's so neat. Oh, look at the Syngonium. I don't know what kind this is. Looks kind of familiar. That is a Syngonium, right? Pretty sure it is. Just a Syngonium with really strappy narrow leaves. Ooh, love some Skindapsis. Nice big leaves. Variegated Jose Buenos. Only like 40 bucks. It's a good deal. <laughs> That's so cute. The Xanadus. They're so adorable. That's a nice pattern inside of that Philod Bromiliate. Okay, brain skipping beats here. Inside looks cool. Some interesting crotons. Don't know what kind. Lots of crotons look the same, so I'm not going to try and guess. Look how freaking cute and tiny these little phycuses are. It would be great for bonsai. I'm thinking that's probably the entire point of them, since there's junipers and things over here, common bonsai type plants. Oh. Oh, white wizards, those look pretty over there. Got that guy to stand up. Ooh, pink princess. Oh, that's a big philodendron. Thing's freaking huge. Yes, they have coconut palms. They look a lot like mine. These plants do not like to be inside. Aww. Cute little glory awesome. Summer glory. I haven't seen one in person, only seen the pictures. Wasn't crazy about it. And I still think I'm not really crazy about it. It looks big and full and robust. Like a, probably a sturdy plant. All kinds of aeroids. Love seeing this at the stores. We got some in flower over here. Aww. Those big stiff leaves. Thai constellations. 85. Not bad. These look pretty good. They have nice variegation on them. Oh, this one's 94. Well, the little one on the front's 85. Cool. Exciting to see them in the stores. This one has really good variegation on it. That doesn't mean much, though, because as these grow, that can change drastically. But it's always good to get ones with the most variegation that you can when you're shopping for them. That one's got some good color on it. Orange marmalade. I think I like it. It's interesting. Cool colors. I always appreciate when things have a nice, um, what's it called? The gradient. I love this. It's so nice. And look at that. This is tempting. Very tempting. It's got good color on it. This one does too. I don't know which one I would get. This one's got a good amount of pink in it. <laughs> it's, that's, that's a few too many foxtail palms in one container. <laughs> I don't hate it, but it's not going to have a lot of longevity. Hey, spindle palms. There's spindle palms everywhere in here. They have some nice looking spindles. 
Yeah, there's a glimpse at the cart. I know some fun stuff to look at when we get back to the house. Hey, Crowley locks up a phylum with the fruit. Never seen them with the fruit before. That's really, really, really pretty, isn't it? So colorful. That was neat. Never seen those with their fruit on them before. Looks really nice. Look at these Hoyas. My gosh. Wow, that's not bad at all for carry eyes that big. It's not it's been a year since I've looked at these sorts of plants, so maybe the price has come down drastically, I don't know, but these were like a couple hundred bucks and they were about double the size all around. Maybe a year ago, last time I was here. Whole bunch of Hoyas. I'm bad about skipping over Hoyas because they're just plants that I don't really care about. But I know a lot of you love them, so here's a nice look. This one's really nice, so I like the color on it. Couldn't tell you anything about it. I mean, I know how to take care of them, but I don't know what kind of Hoya that is. Like a galaxy or stars and some... I don't know. Oh, lots and lots of baby succulents. I love all the baby succulents. I think this is Ripsalis. That's a nice one. Good shape to it. All kinds of strings of hearts and turtles and all the things. Some variegated Senecio back there. <sighs> Morganianum looks really good. This guy's fun too. What is it called? Wishbone, fishtail, fishbone, something. I can't remember, but looks cool. Lots of cactus and succulents. Good selection, lots of little guys. Like when there's a lot of little ones to pick from so you can plant them up together and make arrangements out of them or just, you know, if you have tiny planters really good options for them. These are fun, like these Halithorias. The tower, it's fun. Okay, other than the dry tips, looks really good. Look at all the little flowers, those puffy flowers on the Halithorias. Looks cool. Oh, little jewel orchids. Those are nice. Is that really only $4.99? Look at the floofs. Look at the little floofs. I love the floofs. Nice looking plants. I think we've seen just about everything for the most part. Haven't been over here yet. So you can see there's the crocodile ferns and just the ferns. Lots of ferns, Sansevierias, and good stuff. Lots and lots of good stuff. This place has a huge selection. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I'll remember when I get home. Oh, hey, kitten. Did you miss me? I missed you. You're getting freaking huge. Turn into a beast. Big kitty. Yes, you are. You're so grown up and so big. I walked in the door and she rolled over. She's laying upside down with her paws sticking out. It's what she does when she wants things or she gets excited. She's always sticking her paws out. She points. Points to everything that she wants. He's such a sweeter. I know. You don't care. You probably want to see plants. Got a few things to show. Go look at some plants. No, I haven't put Christmas away yet. Don't act like you're perfect. Got some neat stuff at the nursery and a couple updates that I need to give first. Just because I don't want to forget, I'm concerned that I'll probably forget. In the last video, I potted up some croton cuttings and then talked about whether or not to put a bag over the top and said that I was going to try it without a bag on top. Well, you see what I, I had to put a bag on it. So instead of potting up the rest of those cuttings like I had planned on doing, I've gone ahead and just removed the plastic from the water that they're sitting in to allow them to adjust to just living life with some airflow. I'm gonna probably give them a week like that and then I'll pot them up, put them in a bag like those back there and then I'll slowly start opening that bag after about three weeks or so and just letting them adjust. After a day or two, this one was wilted and it was not coming back up, but I put a bag on it and popped right back up. So there we go, all caught up. Sansevieria shot up a flower okay that's not what y'all are here for i'm sure you just want to look at some plants gotta admit though that's a pretty cool looking spike isn't it 
Really pretty. I love when the Sansevieria's flower. I know it's a Dracaena now, but in my head forever and always, there'll always be Sansevieria's. It's gonna take a long time for me to get out of the habit of calling those Sansevieria's and then calling them Dracaena. Really? Nah. Okay, I don't even know where to start. There's a lot of good stuff over here. And yet, pardon the soil. I've been repotting. This is where I do a lot of my repots. So the desk is pretty much always going to have soil on it because it's not just a desk. It's also my wintertime potting bench. I guess we'll go from smallest to largest. And maybe the ones that are a little bit more predictable. I'm sure you probably assumed I was going to get this one, right? Because it's, it's, come on, look at it. It's just a Halothoria, common plant, but I just, I liked it. It had a good growth habit to it with the, you know, the extension, the climbing thing that it has going on. So I thought, okay, well, you know, it's a little plant, only a few bucks, may as well get it. Just a little thing, needed some smaller plants to put into some smaller planters that I have that y'all be seeing. I think in the video after this one, there are a lot of really cool plants coming in, not plants, some cool pots to look at in the next video, which is another reason that I went to those nurseries because I needed to pick up some little guys to stick in some of the little pots. Just an asparagus fern, it's a nice looking one, it's really floofy, I love the floof on an asparagus fern. I also have some terrariums that need to be redone. You may remember uh, several years ago at this point, I did a whole bunch of apothecary jar terrariums and a few of them could use some zhuzhing and some redoing because I really haven't done much of anything with those in the last like year. They have even, well, I think maybe I've given them a drink of water like one time. They're terrariums, so though. They don't need a ton of water. But uh, they, I think, could use a revamp. And I thought that would be a fun thing to work on this winter. So I want to start making sure to pick up some fun smaller plants while I'm out at the nurseries when I see them. And I love an asparagus fern. It's not going to stay small, right? That's going to get big someday. But they do really well in terrariums. They have a very elegant an ethereal look to them that I find to be relaxing and tranquil, especially when they're in a big glass bubble. Lots of stones and moss around them. There's something about them that's very peaceful and relaxing. And that's also why I picked up one of the little jewel orchids. It was a really good price. It turned out it was $8.99, not $4.99, right? I thought, it, where'd it go? No, never mind. The plant behind it was $8.99. So maybe this was $4.99. I can't remember. Either way, that's a good price for a well-rooted cutting of a jewel orchid. Jewel orchids also are fun in terrariums. They have very vibrant foliage on them. They can be pretty prolific for being what they are. This isn't one of my favorite of the types of jewel orchids, but like I said, for $4.99, I figured go ahead, grab it, toss it into a terrarium, see what it does. And if it does really well, maybe try one of the other types that have some more vibrant and really neat foliage. I do think that the foliage on this one is already very, very pretty. It has that contrast with the pink veining and then the bronzy green on the inside. It's just not that there are some that look really intense and really cool. And this one is a neat one. It's a good starting off point. Like I said, toss it in, see how it does and can move forward from there deciding whether or not I want more of them. Now we can move on to something bigger. <laughs> it's a fern. I needed a fern. Need probably seems extreme, but I did. Cause like I said, the video that comes out after this one, it's all about pottery. Some really crazy, weird looking pots. And I just wanted to make sure I had some various sized plants to drop into them. So you can get an idea of what they look like with things growing in them. Don't think I'll be potting them all up and talk about that in that video. But it's just, it's a lemon fern, lemon button fern. They're fun, sturdy ferns. Also do well in terrariums, needs to be a large terrarium but they're just a nice, sturdy, fun fern. Same appeal <laughs> to me as the asparagus fern as far as having that nice, elegant, again, ethereal, airy texture to them. They aren't quite as messy as some of the other ferns either, which I really appreciate by other ferns. I mean, Boston ferns. They don't tend to drop their pinnae and uh, brown up and crisp quite as quickly as the uh, Boston ferns do, and they, stay much more compact and small. I feel like I'm really flying through these, but I just, there's not a lot to say. I just picked up things that I liked because that's really all there was to it. I, just, I like a fern, I love a succulent, and I love a ludicia, I love, a, or an orchid, I should say. They're just fun plants, which is of course also why I made sure to grab the narrow leaf syngonium. I just really like it. It's a fun one, something different. 
I enjoy the way that it's, it's very full, which is always nice with syngoniums to have a nice bushy plant. And there's a good amount of contrast between the tops of the foliage and the bottoms of the foliage. There's some white, a lot of white on the top of the leaves and on the bottom they're green and they have a subtle outline of green on the foliage as well. And there's some variation in there too. Some of the leaves are more green, some of them are more white. There's just a lot to look at and a lot to appreciate when I look at the plant. And that's why I got it. It's not just a jumble of leaves that are totally identical. You have the sprays of the pointiness that come out from everything. And because it's so full, there's a lot of dividing I can do in there. This is a really, really established plant. I'll be able to uh, do a lot of work with this plant. It needs to be either potted up right away or divided up and then potted, uh, potted, uh, right. what was I going to say? Potted up more? <laughs> what was I, what's, what's the point there? This one's either going to need to be repotted fairly quickly, as you can see, roots coming out the bottom, or pulled out, divided up, and all those divisions moved into their own containers probably sooner than later. Uh, syngoniums are pretty tough, but I don't, once the roots are coming out the bottoms of the containers, that's when I start to say, eh, we should probably get you into an environment where you can really spread around. The pot feels fairly firm not rock hard. I would imagine the plant would really appreciate a larger container or to get moved around into something different. And just like all the other plants that are here, maybe not so much the Halothoria, but everything else, great plants for terrariums. And just overall fun and easy house plants. I really enjoy a Syngonium of just about any type. There's so many different ones to choose from and uh, I tend to go for the ones that are smaller. Like the Pixie and the Superdorf Pixie, those are my all-time favorites. They're not always the easiest to find I hopefully have some survivors left in my terrariums. I don't know. I'll have to look. Uh, if I do, I'll be dividing those up because I would like to have some more. Okay, what should I? Well, I don't know which one to pick out next. Yeah, let's go with the moonlight. Look at the, isn't that, it's so big and beautiful. It's so, I'm gonna have to back this up. You can barely see that. Raise y'all up so you can have a better look at it. Philodendron moonlight, just a fun, easy to grow house plant. Not very uncommon. I had one years ago and I really enjoyed it. It didn't make the cut in 20, there was a lot of stuff going on a few years ago and I got rid of a bunch of plants and I got rid of mine and I wanted a new one. The Moonlight, Prince of Orange, Macaulay's Finale, and Carn there are tons of different varieties of these philodendrons now that all have really interesting leaf shapes and patterns. And you would think that one of the ones like the Prince of Orange or like I said, Macaulay's Finale would be one of my favorites, but the Moonlight, it's up there as being amongst my favorites. And can you see why? Look at all the color that you get on the inside of the plant. They're so vibrant and intense, the contrast between the leaves and the centers of the plants. It's absolutely beautiful. New foliage opens up that really intense, limey green color, and then it darkens out some, not a lot. There's more veining on this leaf than I'm used to seeing on these, by the way. You guys, you see that? Don't notice usually veining sticking around for that long on an old leaf on these guys. Generally, it starts to fade away. Typically look more like this one right here, but that's a that's pretty intense. I don't mind it. The main thing for me is just that color contrast. I love that corally, vibrant center. They had some larger ones there that I really did like. I like them a lot. They're only like 45 bucks and they were huge, beastly, giant plants, but there were mealybugs on a lot of them. I made sure to check everything very carefully for pests, and I did put a lot of plants back because it looked like they had some pest damage on them. That's just, it's the nature of a greenhouse. They're in the process of handling it. They're being very diligent about handling that. You can see there's DE powder all over the surface of most of the containers there, and that's to prevent the spread, to help keep things from being able to go from plant to plant. and. It's just, you know, it happens sometimes. I'm not gonna fault the nursery for that. And I really wasn't freaking out about it that much either because I'm already spraying for mealybugs and spider mites out here. So I was tempted to go ahead and just get some of the plants that I even saw some mealybugs on, but then I was like, yeah, that's probably a bad idea, right? Just because uh, why introduce more problems to the problems I'm already trying to solve? Regardless of that, I did make sure to give everything a very, very heavy rinse and wash in the mud sink when I got home. And I have some neem standing by, so I'm ready to keep going with these. But as it is, I'm already spraying weekly out here with neem and monthly 
with systemics in doing things with DE powder on a regular occasion too. So it probably would have been fine if I got any others, but again, just figured better safe than sorry. Can you see why I grabbed this one in particular? It's kind of a dumb reason. I wanted one of the Moonlights no matter what, but I grabbed this one specifically. I'm pretty sure I showed it at the part while I was in there, but it has some variegation on it. It's just one little splash. There's not much to it. It's just that one little dot, but I saw that and I was like, oh, it's kind of cute. It's got a freckle of variegation. And the Moonlights, you can get them variegated. And I don't think they're normally too terribly expensive. Of course, my threshold for what's an expensive plant has changed a lot over the years. But I think the variegated ones I've seen online in the past were usually like one to two hundred dollars. So that's fine. And this is twenty four. So twenty four ninety nine. <laughs> Huge price difference. I don't expect it to keep throwing out variegated leaves or anything like that. But if it does, that's cool. If not, that's fine too. It's just an overall beautiful plant with or without the variegation. Typical philodendron care. I don't really need to talk. We'll save that for later. There are more philodendrons to pull out and talk about. So may as well get those out first. Look at all the green. There's so much green and lushness over here on the desk. This is really, it's rejuvenating me. Winter is, uh, it's been a better winter than the winters in the past. Been able to stay outside a lot more and get a lot more yard work done because it's been so mild. But there's just something about some fresh leaves and some fresh foliage. It revives my plant soul and makes me happy. You see, I, did, I got one of the ring of fires. I had to. You see how big these are for 50 bucks? That is a great deal, but maybe it's 55, I think. That's still a really good deal for ones that are this big. That's got a lot going on with it. Even offshooting down here at the bottom, and I enjoyed the variegation on them. I have seen the Ring of Fires around for a long time. Ring of Fire and what's the other one? Jungle Boogie. Popular philodendrons that have the long serrated leaves on them. The variegation on the ones that I've seen in the past, I just wasn't crazy about it. But this one has a really nice caramely pink tones and the newest foliage. The newest foliage on the Ring of Fire is always going to be the most vibrant and intense and then it fades out. As soon as they fade out, they have some neat color to them. And again, the center, the catafils in the middle, very vibrant and colorful, just like on the Moonlight or Moonshine. I hear both names for that one. I don't know which ones you prefer, but I usually see them labeled as Moonlight. They're colorful and they're an easy one too. Give them indirect light, don't overwater them. Like let them dry out a good amount between watering. It's a philodendron, right? They don't need a ton of water. No, it's not true of all philodendrons, but of these types that it's going to be true to let them stay more on the dry side with an ample amount of humidity and they'll just hang out and be pretty. And the fun thing about variegated plants is every leaf that opens up, you never know what you're going to get, so it's a nice surprise. It's like some of the foliage on here has some big stripes of variegation, you can see down in here, whereas the rest of it's more mottled and some of it fades to pink on the ends. I mean, that's kind of the thing with the ring of fire, right, is you get tones of orange and pink on the foliage, that flaming hot look, I suppose, is where they came up with that name. I have to make some more room here on the desk because they only had two there. This will probably not come as a surprise to anyone, but I couldn't make up my mind. So I just, I got them both. I actually think I have to put this one away to bring the other one up to show it to you. They were both just, they're too nice. I couldn't make up my mind because the one right here that I already showed you, I really enjoyed the variegation on its newest leaf. And the rest of it, I was like, yeah, I like it. It's kind of splotchy though. And I tend to prefer big chunky stripes of variegation in my plants. And this one has bigger chunky stripes in the variegation. I don't know, you can get it in closer so you can see it. This one, the overall, the leaf on this one, just so much more vibrant and colorful. But I really like the growth structure on the other one and the price was right. I really do, I like this one a lot. You can see it has bigger chunks of variegation on the foliage. Some of it's still splattered but the majority of the leaves have nice big spots on them as opposed to that speckled just kind of dirty muddy looking foliage i'm not crazy about variegation that's really speckly and just all over the place give me some nice big chunks they are top heavy so i'm gonna go ahead and just set them down into some cash pots for now they could probably use a repot i think those pots you saw the containers that these are in these are pretty tiny and they seem to be very well rooted into them. They've got roots coming out the bottoms. So when I mix up some more aeroid mix in the next couple of weeks, I'll be sure to bump those into something larger. Overall, 
I am very happy with this selection of plants. Got some really good looking stuff here. Yeah, all good stuff. Look at all those leaves. So much color and texture. It's beautiful, isn't it? I like to see all that. No luck with the spathophyllums, which was the main reason I went there. I knew other plants would be happening while I was there. So this is all good stuff. It's stuff I was looking for, especially little things to pop into terrariums and some larger plants that I think will do well indoors in the house. We will see. Love that moonlight. I, the ring of fires, like these are awesome. I love that leaf that's back there. Great looking plants, but the, <laughs> that moonlight, I love them. I haven't seen them in such a long time. That made me so happy to see that bright green with the contrast in the middle and that little little variegation spreckle, spreckle, freckle. You know what I meant. It's just great looking plants. Flush and green, making me happy. These are all plants that I generally consider to be pretty easy to take care of as well. Varying from plants that should let dry out between waterings, like the ring of fire philodendrons. Probably at least the top two to three inches of soil should dry between watering on those. And then plants where you can give them all kinds of water and they'll do great. And then others where if you give them too much, they'll rot and die. Love some variety and that's everything. I was planning on getting more, but uh, I think this is good. Especially since I ended up getting two of those ring of fires. You have to have room for everything after all, and there are more plants on the way to talk about in the next few weeks. Love it, love it all. Lots of fun stuff. Comment down below what's going on with your gardens with your house plants. It's the, you know, blech time of year for a lot of us doing our stuff inside and uh, trying to make the most of it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do and stay busy with some plant projects, take care of some things and grab a few new things here and there. Freshen up the indoor gardening stuff. It's what I'm more into this time of year, just trying to freshen up like the terrariums and things that I may keep inside as potential house plants, keeping those looking good. And lots of name, always lots of name. So much name. And fun things to stick on the tops of some really weird looking planters that I'll be showing to y'all in the next video. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.